Hey everyone, in today's video I'm so excited to have the new Google Pixel 4. I'm going to be reviewing and giving you my thoughts on the camera of the Pixel 4. So this is not a phone review, just a review of the camera. We are going to be doing a natural light portrait photo shoot with this camera. I'm going to be testing the new dual exposure controls, portrait mode, night mode and later on we are also going to be going on a little road trip Dan and I who's behind the camera filming and we're going to do some astrophotography with the night mode because apparently that's a new thing that you can do with the Pixel 4 which is amazing so I'm really excited to try that out later on in the video but for now we're going to get started on our portrait photo shoot and I really hope you guys enjoy watching all right let's go down to the sun I think if you just stand maybe up here so we're going to start with just some classic shots. The Pixel 4 is dual camera. It has a flash at the bottom and a laser autofocus at the top. The two cameras it comes with are a standard camera and a telephoto camera. The standard camera gives you a field of view of 77 degrees, which is about 27 millimeters on a full frame equivalent. It's 12.2 megapixels, 1.7 aperture, and has autofocus with dual pixel phase detection. All right, and I'll get a close up shot here as well. The telephoto camera gives you a 52 degrees field of view, which is about 54 millimeters equivalent to full frame. It's 16 megapixels, has an aperture of f 2.4 and has autofocus with phase detection. And both cameras use optical plus electronic image stabilization and make use of the spectral plus flicker sensor, which is the autofocus laser you see in the front of the camera. My first impression of these photos is that I love the quality of these shots. In my opinion, these photos look really crisp and sharp with lots of detail. And in these shots, we can also see a really good example of the HDR. The blue sky behind the trees looks very vibrant and well exposed, just like the rest of the image. Some of my favorite photos that we took were these close-ups on the standard camera. Look at all that detail that you can see on her skin, that sharpness. The quality I think looks really amazing. Now I wanna use the new dual exposure controls. So if you have a look here, we've got the main exposure that you can bring down and bring up as well. And you've also got like a shadow slider. So that'll increase the shadows and the blacks in the image. So you don't have to edit them afterwards. You can just do it in the camera, which I think is really handy. And so this is perfect for a backlit situation like this. We've got the sun behind Claudia pointing towards my camera. So I'm just gonna shoot with the black slider all the way up. The dual exposure sliders is probably one of the features that I am most excited about with this phone camera and one of the features that I will use very, very often. If you guys are new to my channel, my style of photography with my DSLR is to shoot backlit portraits. As I love that glow behind my subject, backlight is also really flattering for skin and makes it appear very soft and I also just overall love what backlight looks like. So I find that when I try to take the same backlit style photo on a phone, I end up with either a background that's well exposed and my subject is very dark, or my subject is well exposed and my background is completely blown out. So with these new dual exposure sliders, as I showed you guys on location, it's going to be so much easier to get a well-balanced photo in those tougher lighting conditions for a phone camera. So we're in a really grassy spot right now with some really nice trees in the background. So I want to try out portrait mode to see how it deals with this, a lot of busyness going around here. So it's, it might be difficult for the camera to get portrait mode, but we're going to see how well it does. That looks really nice. Just hold that for a sec. Here are some examples of the portrait mode photos that we took, as well as a side-by-side -side example of what the same photo looks like with and without the blur slash bokeh, as well as a 100% cropped example. Again, just like the standard camera in portrait mode, I still love the details of the shots, and I also am really happy with how the contrast and color rendition look like straight out of the camera. I'm still a little bit unsure in general of smartphone portrait mode blur effects. They can can look pretty cool in particular circumstances, but for the most part, I prefer portrait mode without the blur added. 
As I mentioned, we were in a really busy textured background with Claudia's hair flying around from the wind. So under these circumstances, I think the Pixel 4 did a really good job in being able to cut out Claudia from the background to add that blur effect. I also wanted to mention that I particularly love what the bucket, the faux bucket looks like in the top half of this image. It looks super creamy and almost similar to the bucket I would create from my DSLR and portrait lenses. The last thing I wanna try when it comes to portrait photography is using the normal camera mode and zooming in. Now I'm gonna zoom all the way back out and we're gonna take a close up portrait without any zoom and we'll put them side by side. Even though you can see some digital artifacts in the zoomed in shot, particularly on the left side of her face, Overall, I'm impressed with the quality of such a zoomed in photo. The thing I like the most about this is that now you can shoot close up portraits without having to choose between distortion and quality. As you can see from the 27 millimeter shot, Claudia's face is quite distorted since we are shooting a close up on a wide angle lens. In the zoomed in shot, we have no distortion and are still retaining quality. So here's another example I took while at the Google launch event of some tiny paintings. The wide shot was taken with the standard camera, then standing in the same spot, I zoomed in eight times, so the maximum amount, to capture the details of the tiny painting. And now we're moving on to the selfie camera. The front camera is eight megapixels, fixed focus, and uses an aperture of f2. I like the Pixel 3, which would start a selfie with the standard camera and then you could zoom out to get a wide angle shot. The Pixel 4 is automatically set to be on wide angle when you switch it to selfie and then you can zoom in if you want a closer up photo. As you can see, the Pixel 4 is not as wide as the Pixel 3. On the 4, we have a field of view of 90 degrees and on the Pixel 3, we have a field of view of 97 degrees at its widest. The Pixel 4 also includes motion sense face unlock with its front camera, which over the past week of using it, I find that it works pretty much every single time really well, even in the dark, which speaking of, we're about to head on a road trip to take those astro photos of the stars and also talk about night mode and show you more example photos of that. So we're gonna head off right now. This is probably the thing that I'm most excited for is to try astro photography with the Pixel 4. So we have made a road trip to the Aussie bush. We're out in the middle of nowhere and I have the Pixel 4 set up on a tripod. Because I am a professional photographer, I do have professional tripods. So you don't have to have something this extreme to be able to do astrophotography with the phone. Pretty much any tripod that will keep it sturdy for a long period of time will do. So it is pitch black out here. And when I'm looking right now behind uh, at the camera, it is basically just nothing. It's just pink pixels on the back of the screen. We're going to put the camera on night sight, then hit the menu at the top and set the timer to three seconds. And then basically what you wanna do is just tap on the screen until you see the brightest star kind of come into focus. As you can see there, it's kind of blurry and there it's in focus. We can also see the astrophotography on sign is up there. So we're gonna press the shutter and see how it goes. The first exposure that we're going to do is going to be the longest one for four minutes and we'll see how that photo turns out. The exposure isn't actually a full four minute exposure because the stars will be trailing like crazy if the photo was exposed for that long. It is just taking multiple photos and then kind of digitally putting them together to create the final image. So now we wait for four minutes, do an awkward little dance because it's freezing cold outside today. <laughs> Yay! So the exposure just finished and I'm gonna take a look at what it captured. Oh, that looks so pretty. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. That is incredible for a phone photo. <laughs> I've got tears running down my eyes. This is what I do for you guys. <laughs> okay. Ooh. 
This photo looks incredible. It's amazing that I just took this on a phone. <laughs> I like can't believe it. This is the type of photo that you'd usually get from a DSLR. And to be able to have that like in your pocket, I am so impressed. And I'm not putting that on. I'm like genuinely impressed by this. You can also see the Milky Way, which I tracked with an app on my phone to make sure we can get it in the photo. And it turned out, it's really cool. Okay, astrophotography on. So this is a <laughs> four minute exposure and I'm gonna stop it at two minutes to see if less time makes a difference in the final photo. So we're gonna try one more and this one would just be for one minute. Now that I've had the chance to look at our three different exposures on the computer, I can definitely see that the longest four minute exposure has the highest quality photo compared to the other two. Our four minute exposure has the best amount of detail and the least amount of digital artifacts. Then if you keep your eyes in the top half of the photo towards the dark vignetting in the top left hand corner, you can see the quality start to decline in the two minute exposure and then finally the lowest quality photo in the one minute exposure. I do love how intuitive it is to take astro photos on this phone. You don't really need to have any kind of camera or camera setting knowledge to be able to take a good photo. The phone just kind of does its own thing and you can end up with the most beautiful results. If you've never tried astrophotography before, it might just take a few tries to get the right composition until you're happy with the framing, especially because usually astrophotography means you're shooting in the dark. But other than that, the phone takes care of everything else for you. I also captured a raw photo for every long exposure astrophotography shot that we took. So here is a side by side of the four minute JPEG and then the final raw photo I edited in Lightroom. So if you like to edit or play around with Lightroom or Lightroom Mobile, I would definitely consider shooting in RAW as there is so much that you can do with these astro photos. Last but not least, to finish up our camera review, I also have some examples of night mode. So at the launch event, Google had a small mirrored room with lots of tiny lights all over the place so we could test it out. Here's an example photo from my iPhone 8 Plus, which is not a comparison by the way because the 8 doesn't have night mode. This is just to show you how dark the room really was. I was able to take some self portraits with the Pixel 4 in night mode and my friend Elizabeth, the example AU on Instagram, which I'll leave her link down below if you guys want to check out her work, also took some night mode portraits of me too. It was super fun seeing a pitch black room kind of come to life in the photos that we were taking. That is all I have for today's Pixel 4 camera review. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video and found it helpful. I will have a blog post of all the photos that I shared in today's video in high resolution so you guys can do some pixel peeping if you like, plus a few extra photos that we took as well that didn't make it into the video. So I'll leave that link down below if you guys want to check it out. And if you have any questions or thoughts, please leave them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer or help you out. But as always, thank you so much for watching. I make new videos every single week. I also have an extra upload coming this Thursday slash Friday, so keep an eye out for that. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys all next time. Bye.